Hey guys, Scarlett here. I hope you all are doing well today. So for my returning subscribers, welcome back. Today we are going to talk all about celebrating Lamas, which is a Wiccan holiday we have coming up. And for anyone new here, welcome. I post weekly videos about tarot, paganism, and magic. So if those are topics you are interested in, do please consider subscribing. So today we have Lamas coming up, which is one of the eight Wiccan holidays. So if you are familiar with some of my previous videos where I talk about paganism and Wicca, Wicca is a form of paganism, though not all pagans are Wiccans. And within Wicca, you have something called the Wheel of the Year. And these are eight holidays that are focused around the solstices, the equinoxes, and the points in between. And Lamas is considered to be one of the greater Sabbaths. Um, so the greater Sabbaths are in bulk, Beltane, Lamas, and Samhain. So it does definitely mark one of the more important days for the Wiccan Wheel of the Year. And these greater Sabbaths are known as the cross-quarter days. And this particular holiday of Lamas, it occurs between the summer solstice, which is Litha, and the autumn equinox, which will occur a little bit later, and that one is known as Maybon. And this holiday in particular, it's all about marking the beginning of the harvest season. So it's really a time when some of the first hints and indications that autumn is around the corner start to be shown. So for example, this is um, the time when some of the first grains are harvested. And grain and harvesting, you'll see, is a common motif for this holiday and some of the other pagan and Wiccan holidays as well. It's also a time when some trees start to drop their fruit. So for example, some apple varieties will um, start to fruit at this time of year. And it's also a time where we begin to notice that the days are shortening because with the summer solstice we had the longest day of the year and the days will continue to shorten until we get to yule the which will be the shortest day of the year and around this time is when you can start to notice that those days are beginning to shorten so on the one hand we are giving thanks to the abundance of the harvest that we have received. And we're also starting to look forward a bit to what's to come in terms of autumn and winter. Um, another interesting way to look about the um, Wiccan Wheel of the Year is thinking about it in terms of the goddess and the god. And one of the popular allegories as a way to think about this is if you think of the goddess being kind of eternal, but the God kind of going through this cycle that mirrors the Wiccan Wheel of the Year. So for example, the God being born at Yule, um, he gets older until he becomes um, a youth at around Beltane, which is when he marries the goddess, and then he begins to age. So at around Lama's time, he is a bit older and more mature then eventually continues to age until Samhain, which is when the god passes over and, and dies until being reborn through Yule. So that's kind of an interesting way you can choose to look at the Wheel of the Year if you would like, as this kind of constant cycle of the god being born and, and dying and being born again. Um, so in some traditions as well, and there are many traditions from various cultures that have influenced the holiday, of Lamas, um, but in some of those you have the concept of a particular sun deity named Lu. And this is a Celtic sun god. And one of the other terms that Lamas is referred to as is Lunasa, so in honor of the god Lu. And thus Lu being a sun god, there is a lot of connections with the sun at this time of the year. The days are obviously still pretty hot if you are living um, near around where I am, which is in kind of the northern hemisphere. Obviously things would be a bit switched if you were in the southern hemisphere. Um, but so the days are still pretty hot and we are recognizing the bounty that the sun has provided us in terms of the first grain harvest. 
And a lot of the symbolism that you see around this holiday is connected to that harvest. Llamas, like pretty much all of the Wiccan holidays, are all about harvesting and giving thanks for the fruits and vegetables and grains and meats that we have that sustain us throughout the year. A huge part of um, Wicca and pretty much most pagan religions um, is about that agricultural season and you definitely see that with this holiday of llamas. Another interesting thing when you think about the term llamas specifically, entomology speaking, it actually comes from loaf mass. <laughs> So loaf being a bread loaf and mass being like the Christian mass because traditionally one of the things that was done is they would take the first grain harvest and bake a loaf of bread with it and then you would take that loaf to the church and actually have the church bless that loaf so you have loaf mass la mass so that's kind of where we get that term and it's another kind of interesting historical connection where it really shows that interplay of paganism and christianity because there is a lot of overlap historically between pagan and christian traditions um, so bread making is a big part of this holiday. Um, one of the best things you can do for llamas is to try your hand at baking a loaf of bread. Um, and even further, because it is a harvest holiday, um, having something like a dinner party or having friends or family over to celebrate this harvest time with them, that's another wonderful way to celebrate. Another thing you can do is create what's called a corn dolly, which is using, you can either um, use corn or wheat or barley, any type of um, kind of cereal crop like that. And you can make like a poppet, like a doll shape. And traditionally, some people would then use that poppet for magic or um, rituals later in, in the year. So that's another thing you can do. Um, in general, you can decorate your home or your altar if you have one with the colors as representative of this time of year. So for example, yellows like representing the sun, the god Lu, who is a Celtic sun god. Um, but then also, you know, sunflowers which are growing this time of year, the color of the grain. So yellow is a great color to use. You can even use some of those early fall colors such as like red and orange. Um, brown is a good color to use as well. And then in terms of symbolism, the symbol of a loaf of bread is a popular thing to incorporate. Um, also a scythe, right? Because the scythes were used to cut the grain um, or any kind type of harvest basket or wicker wooden basket would be a nice thing to put on your altar or somewhere in your home to represent this harvest holiday. Um, so uh, Lamas is a really kind of fun time for me specifically because um, it allows me to get better at bread baking which honestly is tricky and it's something that um, I've only recently started doing. Um, so it's a great excuse to try some new bread recipes, to get together with people, and it's just such a wholesome way to um, connect back in with nature. And that's a huge part of what drew me to paganism in the first place, is I wanted a way to reconnect back in with the natural cycle, the wheel of the year. So even though I don't necessarily consider myself Wiccan today, I still take a lot of joy in celebrating the Wiccan holidays because they allow me to, to connect back in. Um, so I'd love to hear from you guys if you are going to be celebrating uh, Lamas or Lunasa, how you're going to be celebrating. Um, so definitely let me know in the comments. And I do have a few other videos that I've made previously about other Wiccan holidays, so some of the other Sabbaths, and I will link that down in the description below. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you guys, and happy Lamas. Bye.